The muscles of the sternocleidomastoid and scalenes, they work very synergistically together. The sternocleidomastoid, think of the name sterno, sternum, clavicle, clido, and then it goes to the mastoid process, part of the temporal bone here. And when these muscles contract bilaterally, more than likely the head will be held in a forward head posture. And the weight of the head is about 10, 12 pounds. And it's been known that for every inch of translation, then the weight of the head increases 10 pounds. So you can actually, two inches, it'll be 22 to 32, and then three inches, it'll be a 42 pound head. The sternocleidomastoid, unilaterally, as in one side, let's say for instance this side, if it contracts, I will get a side bending of the cervical spine, but now I'll also get a rotation to the opposite side. So for instance, if my right side was to contract, I would side bend to the right, but I would rotate to the left. And that is what the SCM would do. It's actually known as a torticollis if we have a spasm of the, scale, uh, of the sternocleidomastoid. The scalenes, they attach between them all, roughly between C2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7. And then the fibres will insert onto the first and second rib. We have the anterior fibres, the middle fibres and the posterior fibres of the scalenes. The ones of main concern will be the anterior and middle fibres because in between the two there is an interscalene triangle and that is where the brachial plexus, which comes from C5, C6, C7, C8 and T1, conjoins with the subclavian artery and together they're known as the neurovascular bundle and if we have a thickening for instance on the scalenous anterior fibres then we might have what we call a thoracic outlet syndrome. The same will go if for some reason the first rib is, is elevated or we've actually got an extra rib from the transverse process of C7 because it will penetrate within that sort of space. The scalenes will work similar to the sternocleido as in it will assist in rotation of the cervical spine but not because it attaches to the first and the second rib by the C2 to 7, we will have a side bending, but also when we take a breath in, they are accessory motions for respiration. So when we breathe in, the first and second rib will raise, and then when we breathe out, the first and second rib will lower as a result of the activation of the scalenous muscles.